Hello students. In this video, I'm going to explain the code behind Euler's method. Now you can code Euler's method in Java, in C++, and Python, and Sage. What, I mean, there's all uh, MATLAB, there's all kinds of languages that um, you have at your disposal. Uh, I'm going to show you some code from Sage, and this can act like a pseudo code. Um, this code actually is in Python. Um, but it's uh, run in Sage, um, but it'll be the Python syntax. So here we go. Now remember Euler's method. Um, if you haven't seen uh, my video on the derivation of Euler's method, I recommend that you go and watch that video first, because I'm going to assume that you already know that um, information. Um, but Euler's method um, works this way. You're trying to solve an initial value problem, and so you're going to build a solution over a grid of points. The next point in your solution, this y sub k plus 1, we call that an iterate, your next iterate is equal to the previous point plus the time step or the grid spacing times the slope function um, or the uh, rate function um, at that current time and value. So um, there are other forms to Euler's method. Sometimes the H is written as a delta T. And I'm going to stick with that convention. I'm just going to, for the sake of pedagogy here and um, to give it some kind of realistic or applicability, I'm just going to um, go with time steps for our ODE. Sometimes you'll see it written with a delta T. Sometimes the um, iteration variable, the K and the K plus 1, they'll be written as superscripts. Um, sometimes you'll see it that way or any kind of variation uh, there after, okay? All right, now, here's um, our Euler's function. Um, we're going to define a function, so this will be def. We'll call the function Euler. This is the function name. You can call this thing whatever you want to call it. Um, you could call it, uh, you know, Euler approx or something else, okay? ODE, whatever you want to call it. And um, it's going to take in, um, as its arguments, the initial y naught, the initial value, t naught, the initial time, tf, which is the final time, and dt, which is the time step. Now what you're going to do in your code is you're going to initialize your time variable t and your um, ode variable, your dependent variable y, with your initial time and your initial value. The points here, this is going to be the output, so we're going to return the points down here. We're going to initialize the points, and we're going to, we're going to build a vector of points. Okay, so there's going to be a vector of ordered pairs. The first ordered pair in this array of points is going to be ty, which is actually t naught y naught. So you can think of this as a t naught y naught. That's the initial time. That's the initial value. We're solving this initial value problem. That's the final time, that's the time step. So let me take you through this. This is called a loop now. This is called a while loop. Notice it has a colon at the end and this indentation matters. How far it's indented doesn't matter just as long as you may remain consistent in your indentation. Once you stop your indentation, and this is for Python, once you stop your indentation, you're out of the loop, okay? So in Python, we don't need braces or anything like that. We just need this colon and then indent, and then when you stop indenting and line up with this here, uh, the return li lines up with the while, you're out of the loop. Notice that even the interior of the function is indented. Okay, the first iteration. So what's going to happen here is we're assuming that t naught is less than tf. I didn't put a check in for that, so um, I'm just trying to keep it simple. The first iteration, so while t naught is less than tf, okay, so while the, the time your time here, your given time, is less than tf, well certainly t0 is less than tf, then y1 is going to equal y0 plus delta t times the function evaluated at t0 and y0. Okay, let's put that into code language. Instead of distinguishing between these two, um, I'm going to generalize more, and I'm just going to overwrite the y's, because I don't need to store these y's. The y0 and t0 have already been stored in this array, and my next one is going to get stored later my next y. So the y1 is going to get stored later. So I can just overwrite the y's. Okay, no need to keep track of them. I'm going to overwrite the t value as well. 
So the next T is just going to be the current T plus DT. And now there's this nice slick way to compact this notation. You could write it, you could write it this way, by the way, in Python if you wanted to, but we can make that a little more compact and we can use this plus equals. So y plus equals means y equals y plus the next, you know, this delta t times f. Um, if, you, if you had a minus sign in here, it'd be minus equals. Okay. And then instead of t equals t plus dt, we'll just make it t plus equals dt. Then we have this points dot, and then points is an object that gets, it has a method called append. And we're going to, we notice that we just overwrote the t and the y here. So here they were the initial values. Now we overwrote them with the next iterates. We're going to append our list with that now current value of t and y. So this is t1 and y1. And this is what the append does. It says, okay, your points, we're going we're gonna to append the list and put the t1, y1 next in the list. The next iteration works a lot the same way. y2 is equal to y1 plus dt times f evaluated at t1, y1. t2 is equal to t1 plus dt. You're going to overwrite that with the y's and the t's just like I did here. And then you're going to write that in the compact notation, y plus equals, t plus equals. And then you're going to append the points. And now you've just, this uh, new t here is t2. This new y is y2. You're going to append it into the points list. And it's going to be 2, 2, y2. And you're just going to keep on iterating until the while loop says less than or equal to tf, the final time. Once you hit the final time, you're done, and you'll return this list of points. In my next video, I will show you um, a Sage worksheet, and I will take you through um, the output and how this function works. But I wanted you to see the code and so you can get a better understanding of how the code works. All right, good luck.